Hello boys and girls. Today I want to talk about directed acyclic graphs or DAG or DAG for short. Um, I'm coming of course from a mathematical background so I'm going to introduce the, the directed acyclic graph in contrast to general directed graphs and graphs and explain what this concept means in mathematics. Um, and then in the second half I'm going to approach the crypto space and how uh, the DAG as data structure um, is an approach to overcome some, some problems of the blockchain and what the advantages are and what the problems are. Um, and um, of course, the, there are some, uh, some reference projects um, that use a DAG already now in 2018. Um, the foremost one is IOTA, so there's, uh, there's some blogs you can read and you can also check out other YouTube videos. Um, in a future video, I'm going to gear towards uh, constellation implementation. Um, and like, even though this is a concept uh, separate to blockchain, you, you might like, Totally formally, a blockchain is also really a directed acyclic graph, but a very simple one. And even within the DAG space, let's say, there's very, very different approaches. And I'm going to talk about what it means for consensus. Uh, but first, let's look at the mathematical definition and why it's interesting and what you can do with that. So, okay, let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, I want to point out that um, I guess a year ago, even more than a year ago, um, I made a video explaining the blockchain structure and in particular proof of work um, by a simple example, by an analogy. And so if you feel you want to understand the, the blockchain uh, structure first, then that might be a good idea to check this out. And also there is another video on directed acyclic graphs or acyclic graphs you know i have this little german accent um by this guy he's called jackson palmer and he's actually the creator of dogecoin and uh, i recommend actually his youtube channel he's a little bit uh, let's say pessimistic at times um uh, but he is more on the technical side like uh, ivan on tech um, both of them are like semi-technical, I suppose uh, my video is a little bit more, more, uh, let's say, uh, more work than theirs. Um, but uh, this guy definitely knows what he's talking about. Uh, and in that video, he, like in the first two minutes, describes directed acyclic graphs and then talks about IOTA a lot and Byteball and Spectra. And this is also you know, one year ago. Um, but worth checking out. Um, and at the end of this video, I will come back to an article by uh, Elm Labs. I have not known about this before, but they have an uh, IOTA Tangle introductory article. Like Tangle is just the name that IOTA uses for a, a directed acyclic graph for their data structure. Um, explain like I'm five and uh, this is one of the better articles I saw when I browsed to prepare for this video. Um, and I might use their pictures to explain it later. Um, and then apparently there is a PowerPoint presentation by the IOTA people themselves where they also have nice uh, graphs to explain um, their, their consensus mechanism. Uh, even though, again, uh, there are a lot of different ways to approach even uh, the uh, DAG data structure, you can do a lot of things with that. You know, you can go with proof of work or not and, and use this in very different ways and store different kinds of data. So there's a still a lot of room, but uh, as introductory material, I definitely recommend uh, to check out some of those articles. Okay, so uh, let's go first into the mathematical concept of a graph. So there are actually two concepts um, if you plot a function, then uh, the picture you get is also called a graph, but there's the subject called graph theory, um, which is a sort of a discrete uh, topology related um, subject. And 
you have the notion of a graph, which is basically just a collection, a set of vertices of, of nodes. Yeah? Like here's an example. Uh, there are six vertices. And what makes this into a graph is if you connect those by, you know, two uh, at a time by one line, and that's that's really a graph, right? So there, there's no mu not much magic to that. Um, you just got a, a collect, like you can look at the formal definition, you got a connection of, of points of vertices V, and then you got a, another collection of edges, which are tied to uh, two vertices, like, one of those edges in, in this uh, collection, in this set, um, each of those uh, edges has uh, two vertices uh, associated with it. And once you like state which edges connect which vertices, then you got a graph and that's it. And you, you know, obviously these graphs are everywhere. Like you can draw like any relation between people or between things or between any nodes in a network or even if you abstract away an, a mesh from a, from a picture, like from a computer graphic or whatever, I mean, you, you have graphs everywhere. I, um, I suppose you can imagine that, that this is uh, omnipresent. Um, and uh, of course, it makes for a formal data structure in computer science. Um, and then, uh, you know, since this, this is a, a more than 100, 200 years old mathematical subject, there's a lot of combinatorial statements and theorems about these um, objects um, and special cases of graphs. So I think I have uh, a few prepared here. Let me actually close those tabs. Um, okay, let's go with that. So for example, you know, you have a complete graph, which would be a graph where all uh, vertices are connected. Um, and this is not a prerequisite of, of uh, a graph as such, but if, if you have the case that everything is connected, then you have a complete graph. It's a special case. And then you can start, you know, counting how many, like given a number of vertices, for example, six, uh, you know, what does this imply for, like, how can you embed this, this graph uh, on some surface, how, how do the lens uh, of the vertices relate to it if you consider embeddings? Um, you can ask a, a lot of uh, mathematical questions about them. Now, I want to point out though that a, a graph as such is really just a collection of vertices and edges and it has nothing to do with distances and so on. But as soon as you have a graph, you can ask questions like that. Like, for example, you know, this graph, you could like the three vertices and uh, three edges um it doesn't have to be that you you don't have to draw it like that 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 all the different the distances between two vertices are the same but but it's possible to do it right and so that's a property of this, this graph for example here that it's actually not possible to draw it in a way that the distances between all vertices are the same because um if you start uh putting four vertices um together with with a distance of unit length one then this will be actually length of square root of two like okay you know i, I kind of drift here but uh, this just to make the point that you can go in a lot of directions there and you can use them to model things and you can do combinatorics on, on graphs um okay here would be another like special case of a graph right so um the these, these circles are just for show the the graph is still just uh, the vertices here in two colors and the connections and a uh, uh, oh yeah, pronunciation uh, bipartite graph would be one where you can separate the uh, the vertices in two groups. Right? You can say, oh, these are the blue ones and these are the green ones, and the connections are only between those groups, but not within them. Right? There's no connection here. So, for example, you could say you could model a situation like let's say you have um, I don't know. Uh, men and women, and they are heterosexual and had relationships with each other, then there would not be a relationship between two men or two women, but uh, different relationships like this, right? Or, um, you know, you can model communication with this and so on and so forth. And uh, then more f nice pictures. So usually you can check out all these, these uh, Wikipedia articles and they will define properties and dif like algorithms to find out information about those graphs and combinatorial properties like counting uh, properties. And, you know, there are so many different uh particular cases of graphs you could study 
um, what I have here. So uh, this is a funny one, the uh, Patterson graph. is like it's a particular graph. This is the graph uh, that looks like that. So it has 10 vertices and particular connections. You know, you, as you see for this vertices has three connections and these two and this as well and uh, like this as well and this as well and so on. Um, and, but there are no, that for example, here you have, the, the graph is not complete in the sense that the, the here there's no connection here, right? And th this graph is, is pretty, uh, but also has like a, a lot of interesting properties, right? So this is the same graph, but just drawn differently, right? So, I mean, maybe it's not obvious if, at first glance, but this is at least two, uh, these 10 vertices um, connected so that each vertice is free of these connections. And then you can d uh, take this graph and just, you know, move the, like just in the drawing, move the, the, the vertices around and then you get this. And this is the same graph, like it's the same vertices and edges, but drawn differently. Or this has, uh, th this, uh, the Peterson graph also has a property that it's a unit distance graph. So you can, if you want to draw it in a way that, that you connect, that all edges have to have the same length, right? This was not possible like for some of the, graphs I showed you before and then it looks like that um, and you know this is also this or, or just the Patterson graph which is interesting and then we can go into coloring um, and you know you can start possibilities of how you color um, objects and you know they, they, <laughs> they go crazy with uh, Patterson related stuff okay um, yeah I mentioned graph coloring uh, this is also you know you have the, now the vertices and you attach some more information to the vertices uh, in this case, you color them with um, three different labels, like the label blue, the label green, and the label red. And, um, in the last video, where I talked about uh, simplices, which was more of a higher dimensional object, where, you know, I, I drew this this uh, picture to represent knowledge of uh, this uh, the folks on the island. Um, there, we also talked about coloring, right? This was to distinguish the different different citizens of the island. And so obviously you can use, attach more information to a graph and you get a bigger, com more complex object, um, like bigger in terms of information and use it for more things. Um, okay, then you can start to start uh, study topological, like connectivity features, right? And um, how, you know, if I say topolo topology um, in, in this casual way, I speak of connectivity and uh, overlap of, of, of space and you can take graph, uh, graphs and, and study how they're connected or, or rip apart um, the structure. And okay, so <laughs> I don't want to dwell too long on that. Okay, here's again, like numerical properties like counting and uh, more more uh, features. And I, you know, I don't even get into all the algorithmic stuff here. Um, and just uh, to wrap this up, so um, as this article claims, the seven bridges of Königsberg um, is you know, 300 year old um, mathematical problem, uh, which kind of you know, jump started graph theory and also topology. And this is pretty because this, that's the question of uh, like you had Königsberg, which is now renamed to uh, some other <laughs> somewhere in uh, the northeast of Europe. You had the city of Königsberg, uh, uh, Kalingrad now. Um, and you had a structure of bridges, uh, like this. So there's a, this, this river and it spreads, uh, it forks here, uh, going through the city and you have these bridges. And the question is like, given this, this, uh, you know, to use the word topology of the city, uh, can you wander over the bridges? Like can, can, can a guy like, like I start here and I visit the city, can I go over all bridges and visit all um, areas and, and go over all bridges in a way where I only cross a bridge once. So let's say I start here and I, I know, let's say I go here first, then the second bridge. And then I said, oh, the third bridge, fourth bridge, and then I'm here. And now the, uh, I have a problem because I cannot, I cannot both go over this bridge and over this bridge, because if I go there, oh, then I'm, I'm locked on the island because I've already used those bridges. Right. And if I go there, then I'm also locked here and I can, cannot go over that bridge anymore. And it doesn't actually matter where I start. Like, let's say I start here and I go like this sort of way 
if I go here, then I'm locked. And if I go here, then I can never go over this bridge. So the question is, can actually can you do it? Can you s somehow go over this? And the uh, answer was, uh, is that you can't. So the uh, the um, as the article described, so uh, Euler's analysis, you you kind of can take this this structure and map it to a graph. Like this is the way you can can move, and then you can do the combinatorics and, and, and uh, argue why it, it can never be possible that you can cross these bridges, right? So here's some reading information for you. Okay, so let's uh, kill off this and continue with some notions that we will use later in the video. Um, Okay, so there, there's the simple concept of a path in a graph. So this is basically, you have uh, a graph as we had before. And if you just uh, move along the, the, uh, the graph on some edges, then you get a path, right? Um, and then, you know, math is basically up to the user. You can start to make your own decisions and you can require, let's say I define this concept like a path as, um, a sequence of edges that are connected where I never cross um, one edge one, uh, twice and things like that. So you can set up uh, your concepts and then so ask questions about it. And that's that's basically all what mathematics is about, right? Um, so there's this concept of a, of a path and we will need that later. Uh, let's see yeah, if I just uh, Google that, then uh, here's a nice example. Right? Here's, here's a graph, like uh, if I scroll over. Um, it's a graph and then the, the red uh, uh, line here, this is a path. And as we see, this does, there is a one connected lines, one line within the graph, but it doesn't connect, uh, like it, not all edges of the graph are part of the path, right? Um, and, um, okay, here, so we have here a path and, and Here's a, a cyclic path, right? It, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a path and it basically starts at one point, let's say here, and goes in a circle and comes back. Uh, we're going to come back to that later, as you can imagine. Um, and okay, here I have some more, uh, some more types of graphs. So the, uh, uh, a tree graph, right? I mean, I will not like formally define all these things. You have on this Wikipedia page, there's always the de definitions. Um, and a tree graph is basically a, a graph which has no cycles, right? So uh, uh, just uh, in the other uh, tab that I just deleted, we had a graph where I described this path which goes in, in, in a turn. In a tree, like you can imagine this is like there's a, a root and then the, the, the leaves go somewhere, the branches go somewhere and the end in leaves here. Um, it doesn't go in a turn, it doesn't make a turn, so this has no cyclic. And so this is, you can say this is acyclic, right? Um, so there's one hint in the right direction, um, <laughs> no pun intended. And okay, then I introduce kind of uh, graphs as one connected bunch, but you can also speak of, uh, you know, um, collections of graphs that are not connected and so on. So more and more uh, definitions. And then we have the notion of forests. Okay, I mean, read it up if you're interested in that, but this is a, you know, you had a tree and you had a forest, you can imagine in which direction this is going. Okay, and finally, <laughs> I'm coming to a directed graph. And so a directed graph is very similar to um, what we just had, a graph, except now for every edge, we distinguish basically between left and right, we, we make a direction, right? So so um, if you consider this this drawing here and you drop the arrow, like you, you just consider the edge um, and then you get back um, just a graph, right? So you had a bunch of vertices and you have connection lines. Um, but now we consider um, directions, right? So this there's a direction going from here to here and from here to here. And one from here to here, and also in, on this edge, if you will, we, we can go back. Um, so this is like like um, like a graph, but with more information, right? Every edge has has a left and a right notion, and actually, um, you can consider a, a direct graph just as as an a, as a pair of functions, an assignment from edges 
two uh, left vertices and the right uh, vertices. So given any two functions from uh, one um, set of things to another set of things, if you consider the, the one, like if you consider the, the domain of the function, uh, the edges, like in this case, um, this would be an edge, this would be an edge. And, and here, you, I mean, depending on how you set it up, you have one edge in this direction, one edge in this direction, or uh, might also consider this an, as an edge uh, with, uh, which is undirected, right? Because uh, it, ha it uh, has no singled out um, direction. Again, you can formalize uh, all these, uh, these notions in any way you see fit and then use them. Here, the, you might, like the, the, the general way to do this is to, to introduce the directed graph as a collection of pairs that have a dedicated left component and right component. And so the, the pair represents an edge and you have more information than in a general graph because there is a direction. Okay. Um, I'm going in circles here. <laughs> um, the, um, of course, here now, uh, since there are more uh, information or more restrictions, if you will, um, you can um, start also doing uh, combinatorial properties of these objects, right? You can start counting in, in, in new ways and under new restrictions because this is a little bit of a different object. Um, and a bunch of theorems about those. Uh, the direct graph, uh, Wikipedia search actually uh, gives us a lot of pretty pictures here. So, so this is more like uh, canonical, right? You have um, the uh, from from every you can you can see like if you take that as a um, as a typical example for a direct graph, from each vertices you have uh, like for each edge you have an an vertices from which the um, edge starts and then other vertices to which the edge goes, right? So and here, for example, th this would be the source of these two edges and this would be the source of this edge and this is not the source of any of any edge. Um, and, and then here, it is like they, they go here in a circle, this is the source in this direction, this is the source in that direction. This is basically the situation you have here, but um, drawn with one, just with one line. Um, okay, yeah, more, more pictures. And here I also singled out one, uh, let's say subspecies, one special case, namely the uh, tournament, which is um, like the complete graph that we had before, right? Complete graph, but it's directed now in this case. So everything is connected, uh, but you also have a direction. So that makes for a turn, what's called a tournament, right? Um, <laughs> no, serious and combinatorics of course right okay so that was that for the second uh, browser window and we go to the last one um, where do I start here and okay <laughs> we're we're where we wanted to we where we wanted to go so our directed acyclic graph now is a directed graph which also has no cycles so there is no uh, starting at one point uh, like like you know do you remember the, the uh, well, let me see oh this is also so if you if you consider the directed graph here so here like if you jump from there to there to there to there and then go along this line again then you go in a circle here right for uh, directed acyclic graph or acyclic graph uh, the, the the circle line like going in a circle is forbidden right so this is um, did I not google that uh, so let's find a uh, so that would be a nice example, right? So, so here um, you, you see you uh, like um, if you consider paths in a uh, in a directed graph, then you have a kind of walking direction, right? So a path in this graph would be to go like this, and you like if you set pa paths that we had before up uh, in uh, for directed graphs in a way that you for forbid 
to go against the direction of an edge, you know, kind of makes sense, then you see that there is no, there's no way to go in a circle in this graph, right? You cannot go, like there's no, there, while well you can go like this and you can go like this, there is no going in a circle, right? And so this is uh, acyclic or acyclic, right? Um, and the interesting thing, like the interest, like this is, it is kind of a. It is a lot of conditions on a direct graph, if you will, right? Because um, d d you 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 make statements about what's not possible to find within uh, this class of direct graph, and the result of that is that because the structure is more restrictive, that you can find algorithms which. Like if you consider an algorithm as a kind of a, an if branch of statements and for loops and and, and uh, if you imagine that for a graph you can be you can question and search for properties of the graph, then if you make more restrictions on a graph, like with any mathematical object, then uh, you have some guarantees and you ha there are many cases for algorithms that you don't have to consider anymore because they are ruled out from the start by your definition by the, your definition and and the property of a directed acyclic graph is that they admit a so-called uh, sorting a topological sorting so while while uh, a graph uh, has many branches and your, then many leaves potentially if you re restrict the graph to be uh, directed and acyclic then you can actually sort the this graph in at least one way and by sorting i mean you can take the vertices and put them in some order that don't conflict with the direction order like for example uh, here you see a, a directed acyclic graph right so it's directed obviously and it's um acyclic in that there you know if you, if i go like this then i can not go back right there, there. there are two paths down there or like this um, but you don't go, go in a circle and to put them the vertices in order like here is an example here the example would be five seven like this is the the name of the vertices five and the, this uh, ordering would go like this five seven three eleven eight two nine ten so this would be an, an a sorting like a linear ordering of the vertices and it's not the case that the the this sorting that I just stated goes in anywhere against the direction, right? Like if I would have an, an uh, a sequence of vertices where I say, um, I don't know, 10, 11, and 11 comes after 10, well, this, this would go against this direction, right? So I cannot go from 10 to 11. This, uh, in this sorting, the, the 10 must come after the 11, right? And so this is actually not the only... Uh, sorting that's possible here for example here you have um three five seven so they start here five seven and this is also not in conflict with the the, the direction of this graph right you can, i can start with the sorting here and say this is the first one and this is the second one this is the third one as long as i don't claim something like eight comes before three that would go against it or nine comes before three that's that would not be allowed right so d you can see in in the sense in which uh you sorted now this graph and this is a very special property and actually the, the sorting property is so, so strong that there's actually an equivalence where you say um, if you have um, directed graph and it's has an admits a uh, sorting then it's already uh, acyclic right you can you can maybe see that that if the graph is not acyclic if it has a circle then it will not be possible to have an ordering because at one point you have to conf like if if there's a circle with directions and at one point you conflict uh, with with any ordering whenever you would say oh this is an ordering and you would try it but you would find because there's a circle that your ordering is actually a, a wrong claim right okay i hope this is somewhat um somewhat clear um and so yeah you have this uh you have this structure here and the but like this is a this is a, a directed acyclic graph and it has been actually put in an, in a in order right so the um, even though that looks like 
like even though it looks nothing like the directed graphs we've seen before because then we, we think more of these objects um the funny thing is that you can say you can give an order of this thing as we just saw right we saw several examples of a graph being ordered and then it will look like this and you, you can you can still you, you want, still want to keep the edges and represent them and you you put them on the side and so this is kind of a chain um with we like a like a, a chain of nodes, but the um, the vertices don't necessarily have to connect it one by one after each other, but they can be um, connected by jumping over points or leaving out, uh, in a sense, the uh, some connections here. And then there's uh, several um, operations you can also cook up in mathematics. Like you can speak of uh, the so-called transitive closure so if you say okay well i look at this this graph uh, but i want um everything to be connected but in a way that uh keeps the directed structure then you get this thing right you, you see um here there is uh this verte vertex and this vertex and they are connected actually um by bet uh, like with this vertex in between uh, but if you make the closure like if you add everything that's possible to add here then you get also a connection from there to there and that's represented by this red line here and in the same vein from this to this there is somewhere a uh, connection so this is the closure of that and you can also like uh, go in other directions so i think um uh, maybe i didn't search for that but you can do a, a reduction of that like i think here is an example actually yeah here for example here is a um, directed acyclic graph and they do a transitive reduction. So this graph, this directed acyclic graph, stems from this graph by just throwing away ed, um, directed edges that are not necessary in the sense that the vertices that this edge would connect are actually already connected. So here is like A and C are vertices names and they are connect connected by this edge, but also by this path here, right? This sequence of directed edges. And they make it a reduction here by just cutting off this edge. So they throw it away but because they say, well, you know, it's already connected anyway. So this, this has the same sort, sort of um, sorting, ordering. And the same with this one, like, uh, they con like A and D is already connected in two ways, like over B and over C. So why even keep that? So if you want to reduce <laughs> the directed acyclic graph, then you can do various operations. And of course, the computer scientists don't have a lot of um algorithms to perform just that and and it's you know there are like a billion things one could get into um okay here more here i mean uh you might have seen that if you take a, a tree or forest right if you take it if you take a tree that we discussed before and add um directions to it then you get a directed acyc graph right um and the, then uh, there's this notion of a uh, poly tree, right? So this is like a tree, like a tree, but now we have assigned some directions to it and we get that. Um, although it has maybe to be em emphasized that um, a directed acyclic graph is not just a tree or forest that has directions added because um, maybe here's an example. Yeah, so take this, take this, um, this directed acyclic graph and remove the directions in your, in your head. Then you get something that has actually, um, a circle in it, right? Like if you, if you imagine that the directions are gone here, then you just get an, a normal graph. But now this has a circle in it as a, as a simple graph. And so if you take a directed acyclic graph and drop the directions, you don't just get uh, a tree and therefore in the other way around you cannot just take a tree and add, add uh, directions and think this way you obtain all directed acyclic graphs okay but that's just a side remark um okay there's some so much you can do with that so for example here you have um a direct graph which has actually circles in it so cycles in it so this you see a cycle here and you see a cycle there and what you can do is do contraction so you say Okay, well, here's a cycle. I recognize there's a cycle and here's a cycle. But what I want to do now is I take all cycles, like here's a cycle, here's a cycle, and I all the vertices that make for a cycle, I contract them to one single point, 
like one single vertex. And once I'm, I'm done with this, this operation, like once I remove all, uh, all cycles, um, then you get a directed acyclic graph. So here you see the, the, the directed acyclic graph with the blue dots and the, the black edges. And once you do the contraction, you get what's behind it. Like you get the big yell, uh, yellow uh, vertices and the directions. Uh, the, the directions are basically the same, you know, they are, they are the same as the, the edges you had before, the black ones. But now we have a, a smaller, in, in the sense of fewer vertices, uh, graph that's um, acyclic. Okay, oops. Um, okay. Yeah, so the last notion, I mean... I already used that word. We have the leaves here, or later the like with the in blockchain context, I will call them tips. And um, here on the Wikipedia page at the end, I'm sure you have use cases. So you know, I I, sp I spoke of the the sorting, the topological sorting. Maybe without um, bringing a, a particular why, but you know, if you see a graph, a direct graph like a sort of flow chart and goes in directions. Um, then like, for example, if you have, uh, like, let's, let's say you have tasks and they, they kind of depend on each other, right? Let, let's say you want to, I don't know, you want to, uh, cook something and you want to fry something. And to, I think I gave this example last time to fry something, you have maybe to cut the, the things you want to, to, to fry first in, 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 in pieces. So there's a, there's a sequence of things that you have to do, right? So to do the, let's say you do fried chicken, to do the fried chicken, you have first have to cut the, the meat and to, um, add the, I don't know, the spices to the chicken. Um, you first have to unpack the, the spices from, you know, the packaging and, um, to start cooking in one pot, you have to do both of these things. And once you have the spices unpacked and, and, uh, the, the chicken cut and, uh, then you only, then you can put them together, um, and put them in, in, in the, in the pan and then you can fry them. Right. So you see there is, there is a direction, like you have to do two tasks, they go, um, in two ways and then they come together. You have to do both of these tasks before you, um, before you come uh, back to them again like that's like actually that's kind of modeled here like let's say you know if you first you have to go shopping then you have to cut the the chicken and then you have to like in parallel it doesn't matter what you do first um but you have to unpackage the spices and once you have done both then you can put them in the in the fry, uh, fry pan and then you can fry them and a so like a, a topological sorting of this would be like assigning an order like what is what comes first b or c you since they are like as far as this is a partial uh, order like an ordering you can choose what you want to have first b or c right as far as the ordering goes you can first if you are only one person then you can first do the cutting or you can do the unpackaging of the spices and if you have uh, like a, a task list with dependencies like here and you know you can imagine the more branches going off of uh, of this graph. You, the, as you now know, you can also put them in an in order. Then the sorting algorithm <laughs> you want to go as far as use the algorithm for cooking uh, gives you or formalize this gives you a, a task list that you can actually do in order because you know you cannot split yourself. If you're only one person, then you can only do one task at a time. And so um, a task list with dependencies that spreads like a brainstorming picture um, can be sorted and you can get a task list. So, so scheduling and uh, I think what they mentioned here, uh, you know, causal structures and it, it, maybe it makes sense, right? That this um, is tied to directed graphs. Um, what they have here, family trees and I think citation graphs um, and data compression, right? So let's say you have, um, let's say you have two sequences um, and they have, they overlap somewhere, right? So let's say you list your favorite puddings and then you have, you know, vanilla and strawberry chocolate and, and uh, I don't know, hazel. <laughs> and then you have your favorite sweets and these are like in, in order of what you love most. Um, 
uh, candy bars and then uh, vanilla pudding and then strawberry pudding and then um, ice cream, right? And so you have two sequences and they overlap. And actually, if you want to write down, like if somebody prompts you and says, hey, write me down these two lists. What are your favorite puddings and what do you like? Or what are some your puddings you like and your favorite uh, sweets? And it, and if this um, if these lists overlap, maybe that was not the be best example. <laughs> um, but if this this lists overlap, then you can actually draw them um, in a way with, with you know vertices and and uh, directed edges that you don't have to write down vanilla pudding uh, twice because you can you can draw one graph where these these sequences join. I hope that's I hope that makes sense. So you can compress sequences. Uh, if they have overlapping uh, um, structure. Okay, so that's, I think there was a lot of information on uh, directed acyclic graphs. Uh, topological ordering. Yeah, and now, uh, <laughs> finally, let's pass on to uh, blockchain space. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, here, so I, I was actually just looking for this picture we just had. Let's see where it has, where he has that. Mm. Come on. Yeah, so, you know, a blockchain and uh, again, uh, if you don't know at all how a blockchain works, then I, I would recommend uh, check out that other video that I made a year ago. But um, a blockchain, as the name implies, is a chain a sequence of blocks, right? And each of these blocks has information of the previous um, block in it. So you can actually view this chain of blocks as a, a directed and even acyclic uh, graph where basically this is just one path from the present going back to the, the the past or the up down to the genesis of the of the blockchain, right? So if you imagine this this sequence of, of blocks, this blockchain, as an as a graph as we just had with this um, this vertex, the block is a vertex pointing at this and this pointing at this and so on. Then this is a direct graph, and it's even acyclic, of course, because uh, surely the the Genesis block, like the, the first block in the blockchain from 2008 in the Bitcoin case, it doesn't point at anything, but every like all the new blocks will point at the latest um, block um, in the blockchain, right? So this is actually a special case of an, uh, like totally formally of a directed acyclic graph. Um, but the, the, the design of the blockchain as a protocol, like the, Satoshi protocol, let's say, um, doesn't make use of potential splitting of the this chain, right? So, if let, let's say you know these are transactions and somebody broadcasts uh, a new transaction, you know, I, Alice sends money to Bob, um, then this information will be captured and will be appended to to the blockchain. I, I mean, in the Bitcoin case, it will actually first be wrapped into a block and the block will append, be appended here. Um, and if somebody like, for some uh, strange reasons, it says, well, you know, I have the blockchain up to this point, I have the data structure and now uh, privately, let, uh, let's do more transactions and actually um, not put them at the end of the block, but uh, actually continue the chain in, in, an, in a new direction from here, like fork the blockchain, right? So ignore what the, the rest of the network is doing, and just go on here. Then we would make our own fork of the Bitcoin blockchain and would have our own, let's say, private network on which we write new data to. And we would like ignore the, the network, the network effect here and just do our own thing. Um, the, the point is that the the Bitcoin blockchain or, um, you know, this is the general blockchain architecture um, doesn't make, um, doesn't use these forks. And in fact, it's actually detrimental because it is not used because the forks are kind of a, a, a network split. They are to be avoided. You know, you don't actually, you, you want to, the network to grow. You don't want uh, people 
at one point splitting off um, in the Bitcoin network and making their own thing. Like then they would have a fork and th that would be basically an, it, its own, own uh, blockchain, even though it shares like all the history previous to this block, it, it goes on in their own direction. They make their own network like, you know, Bitcoin Cash, let's say, or Ethereum Classic. They, they did purposely did the fork to, to change some things and go on with their own transaction history in a new direction. Um, so I have a picture here, but whenever I click it, I want to make it bigger. Um, then I, yeah, I don't actually want to scroll this medium article. So let's skip that. But basically here you have this, this, this branch of history. Um, and this finally brings us to the directed acyclic graph that I talked about a lot in this video for uh, blockchain. So what, uh, what is done now um, I by, by using uh, this new data structure is that we actually allow for this sort of split. Like we, we say, well, you know, people can actually attach their next transaction on, on any point in the chain, like, like a, let, let's look at the uh, sub path right here. So this is the, the tip. This is the, the latest, one of the latest um, blocks or, um, you know, you don't have to speak of blocks. You can have take individual tr transactions or any sort of, sort of data that you want to append to the network. Um, let's say this is a, the tip we're interested in. And, and here is uh, one path that goes back to the Genesis block, right? So this is the first block, let's say, of the, of the protocol um, network ledger and but there are also others and we actually now allow for people here for example at this point while while there's this path there there might also be like this 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 path and so in a sense it forks off here um but now we say in our protocol while well, we allow for this to happen and the difference is now that we have uh, with this deck uh, deck um structure we we um, integrate a mechanism of later cons to consolidate these these forks, if you will. Right? There are these two ways to split off here, in a sense, and then we say, well, since we we since the one um, vertex does not only connect to a single other vertex, but to two, let's say, or more, um, we can bring them together, and we get not just one chain, not just one, one, uh, one path from a graph perspective, but actually this kind of blob, right? And in a sense, in a sense, this has, um, a direction. Like if, if you, this is the, the Genesis, which, which doesn't point at anything, then there is a, a notion of, of shallowness and depth, right? So this, there would like, if there's a long path, here, if they, like that, maybe there's also a connection from, from there to there in some, some directed acyclic graph, but there's also a long path. And then you can do statistics on, on those and say, well, you know, there are some, some of these tips that have a long distance path to the, to the Genesis. And, and there are some like this one that's very close. Right. And, and, uh, so the, there is not now just this linear order, like in the blockchain, but there is a, a more complicated notion of distance and it, it can also grow in different directions. So you can imagine now that here, the somebody like this is a, an, the example of the um, IOTA um, protocol, right? So you can then uh, actually confirm these transactions by attaching here. And um, this way, uh, the, the advantage of this system is that it ought to be more scalable because um, you don't like not all um, validations have to always to happen on the last block. And if somebody, I don't know, uh, has a late transaction or builds an, an orphanage or fork, then this can still be integrated into the, into the network by consolidating it like this here, right? Um, and um yeah so so there is then no no strict or there is then no um 
no clear cut uh, notion or though of of what to confirm right in the in the Bitcoin blockchain case we knew we had the sequence and and uh, we knew that the next um, block confirmation always comes at the at the end uh, of the the chain and e and if there's a fork then the uh, Satoshi Nakamoto rule let's say is that the valid blockchain so to speak is the the longest one right if there's a fork and and uh, and people um, do quotes unquote the wrong uh, go in the wrong direction for some time then they might still uh, target their device like their mining devices or whatever on the longest chain and say well okay this this was a <laughs> this was a wrong route let's let's go back and then the this satoshi consensus works by by always like jumping to the longest uh to the longest branch from the forking point right i mean there's much more to it and this very causary but but you can see that in in a directed acyclic graph uh since we actually want to um, bring back together uh, different branches in, uh, potentially. Um, there is no like, while well, there's a notion of depth, there is no endpoint in the chain, right? So um, there are some um, some problems though with that. So you you want to um, like uh, I think it's in this uh, article actually. So they describe how uh, like how. At what point uh, then uh, a vertex in this graph is actually considered to be validated because you know here you have basically two clusters you have this cluster and then this this cluster and tips that are independent of each other right there's no since they, they po like they both this uh, confirms uh, that and that confirms that so in a sense x and indirectly confirms this one and y directly confirms this one um, but uh, then you have these tips and then you have the the next things that are uh, confirmed here and then if you go uh, deeper then at one point you get to vertices which are confirmed by everything for example di from this is confirmed by everything indirectly at least because there's a path from from that to that and from that to that even more paths um, while where well, there's no path from y to p for example right so there this structure is more complicated and if you like here you have the i think that's called a lazy tip well, let me, um want to have the same notation as this guys in this article um what you want to avoid uh, then though like a problem that you in this sense don't have with a blockchain is that you want you want to make sure that if somebody uh participates in a network and confirm like this set guy confirms n and and j then uh, you also should eventually conf like if this carries information like a transaction then you also want to confirm that right you don't want to have this this um these sites uh side tips and you don't want you know you, you want to make sure that the leaves or side tips here get back integrated so that eventually like let's say i come with another uh, confirmation i want to confirm those so then this is also confirmed and back into the, in the network in a sense it, it doesn't stay as a as an, an uh, a leaf on the side right so you you want to actually the, the challenge here is really to design a uh, uh, consensus and and algorithm and also a choice of confirmation node confirmation um, algorithm so that the structure as a whole uh, stays coherent and you don't get a billion uh, unconfirmed tips on the side so this is one of the one of the issues here right so um, you like I'm not going to in the IOTA um, mechanism at all but I think here at the end here they give an example of something that you don't want to happen you don't want that you get this this uh, narrow band this is this is a uh, directed acyclic graph still but it's, it's kind of uh, a chain crystallizes out i mean you guess you want to uh, have some sort of chain but there are so many so many um you know tips that are actually left alone and uh, these are then not back integrated and and if you um like th the ideas of course that that you confirm new 
tips here that they come to the network um, and you don't you you must look out that you structure your algorithm in a sense that that rewards or incentivizes the, the system to to stay as a whole and don't fractionate i mean that may may or may not be a, a desire but here it, it, in for iota is it's definitely a, a target um okay and then they do they discuss the statistics of how many how many uh, leaves uh, in the you know iota monte carlo algorithm um how this involves with time and and if that works or not and so you see this is this is the sort of challenge that's that's that comes with this much more complicated structure you know, if you go away from a blockchain which is just the the most simple uh, directed acyclic graphs and and now allow for co consolidation of different worlds and different um, blocks of the deck then you get a new do it, you get you get the advantage that you can you know i didn't speak of, of the advantages too much but but basically you have the, the scalability of people being able to to look at parts of the um to of the uh, um, network and not having to always stay up with the la latest block and only write to the latest block and and uh, um, low to the latest block um so i i hope i mean i, I think there was a uh, an introduction to to the to the problems and advantages of the system uh, of course uh, you know as you might have noticed i'm also not an expert in this at all uh, i'm learning this um but um yeah, uh, when I get to the point where I can speak of more implementation details, uh, I will make another video. Uh, and with this, I suppose uh, I leave you today. <laughs> Sorry for the one hour long video, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy understanding these things and uh, you have to put in some work and I have to do that too. Okay, take care and goodbye.